Casey Martin from Wine Country Pens and Wine Country Woodworks, and this is going to be the first episode of a new series that I am going to call Wood Shop Episodes or just Shop Episodes. I haven't fully decided on the name, but something similar to that. And it's basically going to be a vlog style series, if any of you guys are familiar with what a vlog is. But basically, I'm just going to be talking to you guys about what I've been up to lately, what I plan on doing soon in the future, what I've created recently, and just kind of give you guys a you know an update in the shop. This series might evolve to have little projects or whatever, but I think it will be a good series where I can at least try to get an episode out once a week and kind of update you guys with what's going on. And I think it'll be fun to kind of share some time in the shop together and, and see what's going on. So I'll, I'll kind of show you guys some of the cool new stuff that I've got going on. So one of the first things I just wanted to mention that I recently picked up is this super sweet new vacuum chamber. It's called the Glass Vac by Best Value Facts, as you can obviously see right there. Right now, I've got some nice pieces of maple, maple burl soaking after being stabilized in there. And this chamber is super sweet because <clears throat> obviously you can see through the top. It's way bigger than my chamber, which I used to use and will still be using. But more importantly, it holds vacuum super well. So I know Curtis Seebeck from Turntex Woodworks, who makes the cactus juice, recommends to always be running the vacuum pump while pulling the vacuum to get the best results. But this holds a vacuum so well that even when I'm done pulling vacuum, I'll still keep it <clears throat> holding vacuum for a day or so before I let it soak at no vacuum. And the reason why I do that is because right now, as you can see, there's no vacuum. But when I have it holding vacuum and with the vacuum pump off, you can still see bubbles coming up which means it's still fulfilling its purpose of taking the air out of the wood. So another kind of cool thing that's tied to that is I've been making some really, really cool stabilized pieces of maple burl and other burls as well. And I will show you guys some of the blocks I've been making because they are unreal. This is a lot of the, the smaller pieces in here. Hopefully you guys can see. I've been keeping them in here because it started to get cold around here, and that's a good way where they're cooling down to try to preserve the air moisture going back into the blanks as much as possible. So here's some of the blanks I was just talking about. They're less blanks and more of blocks. And honestly, I am so stoked on how these are turning out. I think the wood itself is just beautiful and i'm having a ton of fun with creative colors like this is a, a three color block which i haven't done too much of black white and green and then of course some some normal just single colors like the green and the red and the blue over here i have a little cool story about the wood from this block which i think is one of my favorite unfortunately the alumilite seeped in and this wood might get stabilize again for the pieces that haven't been cast. I'll show you guys some more of the blocks, but let me tell the story of this really quick. I'll move over to another portion of the shop. Essentially over on the fence of my property, there was this piece of burl that I, well wood that I didn't know was burl and it had grown into the fence. And it had been there for like a, the last few years that I've lived in this house while going to school. And I never thought much of it until I was looking at it closely the other day. And these are some of the cut up pieces. And I could see the, the burl, like, you know, of, you can tell from these little ridges and, and stuff like that, that it's burl. <clears throat> and so these are the unstabilized pieces, but you can tell it's kind of punky or rotten in some places, but it's also got some great color. And after it's been stabilized, as you could see over there, it's pretty cool stuff, and I think I'm going to double stabilize the pieces that I have already. Um, but here are some of the pieces that are stabilized but that I think I might stabilize again. I'm thinking it must be Buckeye Burl because you can see the different color from the, the black and the light 
but it's it's pretty cool stuff you can see when it's stabilized there this isn't hasn't been sanded or anything and it's already got some shine to it so I'll, I'll go back over to the blocks and and finish that up and once I'm done with that I'll talk about this big pen order that's really fun and exciting so these are some blocks that I got wood from all the maple burl I bought myself and I told you about that burl but some of the other burl that I made these blank blocks out of that could be cut into pen blanks I got from all of this burl that was sent to me by Evan Finger who's a, my buddy that's also a YouTube viewer uh, big thank you to, to Evan he is the man I'm gonna be sending him some of these stabilized bottle stopper blanks that's wood that he sent me and also you know whatever picks he wants from some of the blanks or whatever I can still make with this stuff because it's a lot um, before I get over to there because you guys are gonna love that stuff I'll finish up just showing off the the blanks really quick because I know we all love checking those out and I wanted to mention all of these will be up on my Etsy some of the most recent blocks and there's a couple in the pressure pots as well that will be uploaded by the time you guys see this, but not yet. <clears throat> and um, I also made a couple knife scales, which are about half an inch thick with some of the Amboina, I think that's how you pronounce it, burl, Australian burl that Evan sent me. And one of my more favorite pieces <clears throat> are these two pieces right here, these kind of transparent ones. All I did was sand this on a belt sander and spray it with spray lacquer and it's almost transparent. If this is polished to like a normal standard of a knife maker or a pen turner, it's gonna look like a blue tinted glass. Like you can see my finger there. And same with this guy. I have some pictures of before this was cut and it was like crystal clear, like you can kind of see there, but <clears throat> pretty cool stuff. So I'll, I'll touch on the pens in a second, but let's, let's check out all this sweet wood Evan sent me. A lot of it has been cast already, but a lot of it is, um, this is the only piece that I recently bought myself. Um, this is some pretty cool brown molly burl. Now I'll make some blocks out of. But a lot of the, the burl he sent me is also some type of Australian burl. You can see with the, whoops, with the old growth and the new growth with the different colors. One of the more wild pieces, I could maybe sell this as a nice scale or something like that. Or if Evan wants me to stabilize it for him, I could do that. But it's just, it's wild. This stuff looks like it's almost been dyed. That's how vibrant that wood is and then this whole stack here is really thin pieces that could almost be used as like a veneer or something like some of it's really thin um, and that's why i'm going to try to use this a little mold i made a while back to maybe cast some knife scales um so you definitely if you guys have any need for these. I mean, Evan sent me these as kind of a mutual deal where he doesn't have the casting equipment that I have and so that I could make him some stuff out of it and whatever isn't used, then I could keep. Um, so if anybody has some ideas or any desire for any of the stuff that Evan is, isn't going to use and that I can't think of to use for something, let me know because, um, you know, we like to, of course, help the community and help everybody out. So I'll talk about these these pens because this is a really fun and exciting thing for me. Um, this is an order of 40 hybrid grapevine pens. It's the Lava, Lava pens, um, and it's to a company called Biagi Brothers. They're a big logistics company that does a lot of the shipping for wine companies like Gallo and other large wine companies. They're located in Napa. And so that's a pretty fun, fun order. I've only gotten three finished up and I plan to get a lot done over Thanksgiving break. Um, let me, I'll, I'll flip the camera around and, and tell you guys some, some like kind of personal pers perspective of, of what's going on. 
So just to give you guys kind of an, an update of where I'm at in the personal life and how this all relates to the shop is, right now, this quarter, I'm actually taking 20 units at Cal Poly, which if you're not familiar, some colleges call them credits, and a full-time student is 12 units or 12 credits. So I'm taking 20, which is five classes, obviously a, a hefty load. And with the orders, like the order I was just showing you guys, and I also had an order of 50 barrel stave pens for a company called Handwritten Wines, I've been swamped. And so that's why, for example, the Pinecone pen, this video is coming, guys. I, I promise it's coming. I've just been swamped, and I, I plan to get that out within probably the, the week or so after Thanksgiving. But, you know, with the classes, I had like multiple exams this last quarter and a, a final paper due. And so I'll, I'll get back to the fun stuff, but just kind of wanted to give you guys some, some personal perspective of why that video hasn't came and, and why I might seem like I'm slacking, although I, I promise you I'm trying my best. So the last thing I wanted to touch on with these is that the only thing that I think I didn't do the best on, because I'm really happy with how I turned them all, the wood ratios, is that some of them have the normal amount of um, pearl, or not pearlex, alumilite, sorry about that focus, about alumilite metallic gold, so it looks like lava. And then some of them are more just red, and they almost just look like a red blank. But I, I think it'll be fine, um, as, especially because the company is sending them to, uh, they're sending them as corporate gifts. So as long as they, the final product looks nice, the people they're being sent to aren't gonna have anything to compare it to. Um, so one other thing um, about these blocks, which has been really fun, is um, <laughs> using spray lacquer. I actually have never used spray lacquer before these and it's so nice getting that look of obviously the, the wood looking wet but also the resin looking somewhat wet which makes it look nice and you can you know really see the the swirls and all of that. So I'll um I'll talk about a couple more things and I think that might be it for this first shop episode. So guys, I don't think I really have anything else to cover. I guess the one thing that I also wanted to mention is I wanted to make a video and that should be coming up soon on my shop lighting. Hopefully in the video, the lighting has been really good. I kind of went through a process when I was setting up the shop to make great lighting, of course, for working, but also for the videos I was making as well. So like the video if you're looking forward to the pine cone video, the pine cone pen video. I also plan on doing it. I have a big pine cone that I'll do a, a kind of block casting of as well. So like the video if you're looking forward to both of those as well as the light video because I think what will be cool about that video is I'll talk about the lighting in my shop and what I like about it and why I think it's great. And I also was sent by a company some LED bulbs to test out and review for you guys. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they work out. I haven't tried them yet, so hopefully they're cool. And if so, I'll definitely let you guys know about them and where you can get them. So <clears throat> without any further rambling, I hope you guys liked the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you like it. We're getting really close to 5,000 subscribers, which is just unreal. I never would have expected that. So I'm really excited about that. And I plan on doing some type of giveaway with blanks or blocks, whatever you guys want. Some fun stuff is coming. So look forward to that as well. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And also let me know what you guys think about this shop episode series. This is obviously episode one, but I plan on doing more. And especially if you guys like them, I'll keep them weekly if I can. So take it easy, guys. I'll let you guys go and see you on the next one.